Welcome back everybody, Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing, and I was recording, I was in the process of recording an outro, I mean you can see my GoPro is behind me, and uh, and, and I was, you know, just wrapping up uh, my last video and just talking about what was going on out there and, and what I was seeing, and uh, my outro ran a little long, and unfortunately a lot of times I can over explain something, so I stopped for a second and I thought about it, I said you know what? It's been a long time since I sat down and uh, and talked to you guys. And, you know, there's a lot that's been going on as far as flounder, flounderland, what is going on out there. So I thought that I would take a quick time out and talk to you about what is going on in flounderland. What is what what I see, what's going on with flounder, what what are they biting on, um kind of the area where I've been fishing and uh, with, without giving up any locations because I do get I do get people that message me and email me and and shoot me messages on social media and says hey man please don't tell anybody where you're fishing because I love fishing that spot and it's already crowded so I had to you know trying to scale back it's a fine line right so you don't want to you don't want to burn spots uh on the other hand Spots that are extremely popular, and in my mind, everybody should knows about them. Uh, you still have people that are new to the area or new to fishing, where they're not, they don't understand or know where you're at, and they want to go there. Um, so it's a fine line to help people, and it's a fine line to help people not get crowded. So it's kind of a juggle. Uh, so be patient, you know, I mean, we all want to just walk out and hook up and, you know, not spend money and gas and time and, uh, and come up with skunks. I mean, we all, we all want that, but, uh, a lot of times what you have to do is just go out there and explore yourself and figure it out for yourself. Uh, not everything's going to be handed to us. And, and, and we're kind of living in that kind of society where everything is at the touch of the screen. It's at the touch of your phone. It's just, you know, wherever, when, whenever you need uh, instant, in, instant gratification, instant satisfaction, push of a button, boom, you have it. And, and we're all like, I'm like that too. We're all like that. So just, you know, be patient in case you do ask, Hey, where are you fishing? Where are you? And I don't answer you. It's not because I don't want to tell you. It's that I have other people ask me not to. All right. So sorry. Didn't mean to get off of that. All right. So what I wanted to talk about was give me a flounder update. Give you a flounder update. What is going on on the water? Because I know most of you guys aren't fishing right now. Most people aren't chasing flounder. Uh, most people are waiting for the flounder season to open back up and go out there. <clears throat> I love fishing for flounder. I don't remember what flounder tastes like. It's been so long since I've had flounder, a taste of flounder. I have no idea what it tastes like. So I, I catch and release anyway. The flounder season closing is probably like the best thing for me personally that they ever did. Because guess what? The waters are empty. Hardly anybody's out there. It's great. I have a place to myself. Love it. <laughs> I really do. And that's bad to say. I know it's bad to say. Bait shops are hurting. Captains are hurting. Uh, you are hurting because you want to be out there hooking up. And, and I feel bad for you guys. But on the other side of that, I have it all to myself. All right. So what I want to discuss is what am I using? I wrote it down. Jig heads I'm using. What I'm using. Where? Where's the bite? What's going on with the bite? And also, how long is this flounder season going to last? Or how long is the run going to last? It's, it's always, we always want to know that, right? We always want to know that. But, um, all right, so what I've been using, I came across a jig head. It is H2O Express. I'll leave a link in the description section of the video. It's H2O Express jig head. Uh, I've been using three eighths of an ounce. And because uh, it, it helps keep on bottom. You want to stay on bottom. You want to fish for flounder. They're all on bottom. And, uh. And I've been using that jig head, and that jig head has such a good barb on it. I mean, when you when you hook set, and, and they're cheap. It's like $2.99 for like a pack of five. Yeah, and you're fishing around structure, so you, you're getting hung up and, and losing, and losing, uh, <coughs> lose jig heads, lose, lose, lose your lures all the time. So, and, but it has such a big barb on it, so when you set that hook, it really stays in. It's, it's hard to get out. Uh, and don't, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. As soon as you feel that thump... Fulfill the heaviness of the flounder, roll your, roll your rod tip down, drag a little bit, reel it back down, and just set the hook. You know, I've, I've set it, set it over and over again, but that barb is going to stay on. So the 3 8 ounce jig head. 
works great. H2O Espresso. Two nine nine, cheap, inexpensive. You lose them, doesn't hurt. Also using Gope, right? Falander, love scent. The Gope, I know Gope get torn, it get torn up easy. That's the that's you know you gotta take the good with the bad. Not everything's gonna be perfect. Not everything's gonna last long. But the bite ratio and hookup ratio for Gope is phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. No matter what you're fishing with. So I've been using a lot of single head, single jig head rigs and setups. I've been throwing the get her done rig. I just don't have the, haven't had, you know, this bite's been weird this year for me. I haven't, last year and last couple years since I started using the get her done rig, that was my go-to, my go-to rig. And I'm just like, bam, 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 hammering the flammer, flounder. And this year hasn't been that way. This year, it's, it's weird. This is a weird bite. This has been a weird bite. Um... A lot of time, the flounder will just, it, it almost feel like they, they might peck at it a little bit. And then you pop it and let it go and fall down again, and then they'll pick it up. So many times that's happened this year. Uh, it's been a, a different different little bit of a bite this year. And you know, and, and you have like 80% of your flounder are really just in a latch on and they hammer it because they're feeding, the, they're, 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 the feeding frenzy is there, they're, they're, going offshore so they're going to take a lot of energy to move so they're feeding a lot so majority like 80 percent of your flounder you're going to have that instant bite but that other 20 percent i mean if you think about it if you're catch you know 20 flounder take 20 percent off of that and 20 percent of them are, are hitting real weird they're hitting real there's like i said there might be pecking a thumping a thumping and you pop it and then they'll get on it again <clears throat> or you try to set the hook Excuse me, sorry, I'm dealing with allergy issues. But you try to set the hook, and then, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll fly. Or you try to set the hook, and you raise in elevation, and they'll come up and get it again. Uh, Eric and myself, we've been experiencing that a lot. Um, I, I like using 30-pound fluorocarbon leader line a lot. I've used Yozuri a lot. I do like Yozuri. I came across this other more inexpensive brand on Amazon, and it's... I hadn't seen any reduction on the strike, so I've been using that a lot lately, and also the three J three JD, and also the H two O Express Jig Head and White Gulp White Swim Mullet Gulp or White Shrimp, the big nice four inch shrimp. If you can find it, it works really good. Um, shrimp with the pink tail works really good. Um, right now, you know where we're where we're fishing at is a little cleaner water. So a lot of white, some pink. Eric has been using a chrome. It's purple, purple chrome. Uh, he used a shrimp and the the fluke uh, gope, and and that's worked very good for him. I mean, Eric is like Eric's on point. Eric Eric is on point when it comes to fishing for flounder. I me, I personally, I just fish too fast. I got I, fast. I got to slow down. I got to slow down. And he likes to use a quarter ounce jig head. And I try using a quarter ounce jig, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. And when he tries to use a 3.8, he says it feels way too heavy for him. So, I mean, it is what it is. But, I mean, you're talking about the difference of, you know, when, when, when he's, it's not like he's catching and I'm not. I mean, we're both we're both on the flounder. And we're both uh, hooking up and having good good bite ratio. All right, so where are we fishing? You know, we're flounder run through. Any kind of area that kind of gets pinched in, I don't know what area you're, you're normally fish, but any kind of area where it's a pinch in, like a corridor between inshore and the Gulf, that's where you want. And any of that, like a hallway, you know, any of that area as they're coming through the channel, on both sides of the channel, around any kind of structure, we're going to find them. You know, we have the Pelican Island and you have Galveston Island. And in between Pelican Island, Galveston Island is a corridor, and we're catching them all in there. Uh, yes, some locations might be better than others. Some some days might be better than others, but you know, just go out there. You know, look for them in in the uh, Galveston Ship Channel area, North and South Jetty, all that area where they're going to exit and go to more open water is where you're going to find them, and that's where we're catching them. Look, listen, it's not a big mystery where we're fishing. It's not a big, it's not, it's not a, a big secret. I, I joke around and say I'm fishing top secret location, but it's really not. Um, 
you know, if you have an opportunity to take a drive on a Saturday or Sunday and uh, once flounder season kind of opens up, you're going to see where people are. You're going to see where they're at. You're going to see what is going on out there and just go explore a little bit. Um, take some gold, get some jackets. And, and that's, ba- that's basically what I've been doing. I just l- literally take a pill bottle, a uh, pharmacy pill bottle full of jackets, and I take some packs of gold and I stick them, you know, in a bag. And that's it. That's that's it. It's that simple. And uh, 30-pound fluorocarbon leader line. That's all you need. All you need. So how long is the flounder season going to last? That's I get that question a lot. How long is it going to last? Listen, every year is different. Every year is going to be different. Every season is different. Your summer is going to be different. This summer is different than last summer. This fall is different than last fall. Winter is different than last winter. It's kind of warmer this year than it has been in the past. So we had a later start of a run. What that means to me initially in the beginning of the run, what that meant to me is that we can possibly be seeing good numbers still like week of Christmas. I, and, and I still think that I kind of got nervous because we went yesterday and we went and fished one of the locations that we've we caught like over 160 flounder at and uh, on, you know, between three of us or actually four of us. But we went yesterday and it was dead. <laughs> it was almost scary dead. Like, oh, my gosh, are we are we at the end of the season already? And uh, Eric and I were kind of looking at each other like, man, it is just so slow. It is slow. So, so dead. And uh, he went back out this morning, and that wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. He's out there, and he's catching. He's having a good time and catching the normal numbers that we have been catching. So it, it can it can go, you know, like I say, it's going to fluctuate. It's going to fluctuate um, day by day, hour by hour, uh, location by location, the amount of flounder that come through and the amount of time, uh, the amount of hookups you get can fluctuate. So my prediction is that the week – when we open back up December 15th is that we're still going to see really, really good numbers. Typically what happens is like that week, maybe even touching to like maybe the week of Christmas, not through Christmas, but the week of Christmas, you start seeing the number of flounder in the group number of flounder go down and you'll start seeing. So, so flounder running groups, I just explain this real fast flounder running groups. So you have a school of flounder that run through the area. Sometimes those, the next group, they're closer together. So you might have a group of flounder that run through and you catch and pitch and everybody will be catching, you know, five, eight, ten flounder at a time are in that group. Maybe a group of 20, maybe a group of 50 that move through the area. And then the next group will come in. And sometimes those two groups, are clo- the groups are closer together. They might be 10 minutes apart. They might be 15 minutes apart. As we go in towards the tail end of the flounder season when they open the season back up and you can start harvesting again those groups get further spread apart so we're now or let's say two weeks ago we were seeing groups of maybe 10 minutes apart or five minutes apart they might be 20 30 minutes apart doesn't mean that you should pick up and leave a lot of times you gotta you know you stick around and, and wait for the next next group but what also happens is those groups of 50 are 40 or 30 they dwindle down they can dwindle down and they might be only groups of 10 maybe only groups of 12 and then they might be 30 minutes apart so that really slows the bite doesn't you know we all say it slows down and it does slow down but the group's smaller and then they're further apart but what happens like in december towards the end of december is there bigger flounder they're bigger girls. So where we're going out and we're catching 20 flounder between 16, 17 inches and maybe two or maybe, you know, maybe one or two flounder that are like 18, 19. We might get lucky and get one at 20. Towards the end of December, you'll start seeing big girls. Like you might go out and catch two or three 20s, but you only catch two or three of the the smaller 17 18 so you might go out and catch only five flounder in seven hours but two or three of those are going to be big girls real big girls the experienced ones the vets the ones that have made this travel for to open water over and over again or you might go out and spend all day and only catch two flounder but they're going to be big Uh, that's that's not always the case but that's kind of what the norm is 
So how long this season is gonna last? If I had to put a date on it, I, I probably think that we're probably gonna the season might last a week or two later than it normally does as far as good numbers go. Doesn't mean that you're gonna be pulling a hundred flounder out into the, the end of December. But, you know, you can easily, I, in my mind, you could probably easily go out and spend the day and probably catch like 20 uh, through like the week of day, the week of Christmas. But, um, and hopefully most of them will be bigger girls because that's always a trend. Because <clears throat> we really had a late season run. But on the other hand, how many are moving through? So, did we have 9 or 10 days that we could have caught 160 flounder consecutively? That's a possibility. And what that means is that at the end of December, you won't see those numbers like I'm hoping. You won't see those 20 flounder days. You might see those eight flounder days or those those five flounder days. But from what I've seen, from from what I'm gathering, it's probably going to be a late run. Or runs and probably numbers are probably going to be there later than they normally have. But there's no, it's, it's not exact science. It's fishing. <laughs> You know, the fish are going to do what they're going to do. The weather's going to do what it's going to do. And uh, we, we just hope for the best, and we just try to go out and try to hook up. But that is my update. Uh, you know, I, I, I love flounder fishing, and I know people are always like, man, how why are you still out there? Why are you catching the fish? You're tearing up the fish. You're hurting the fish. We're not hurting the fish. I've gotten stopped, I think, twice now by Texas Park and Wildlife game wardens, and neither time did they ever tell me, stop fishing for flounder. Neither time had when I did the interview with the last year when I interviewed the marine biologist, they didn't say you're gonna kill all the flounder if you by hooking them through the jaw. If you gut hook them, you, that's that's when they get in trouble. You hook them in the gills, that's when they get in trouble. That's why you need to set that hook early, and that's why I recommend not using any live or dead bait because flounder are gonna gut hook themselves, so they'll swallow it down. They'll take that your, your hook down, your J hook, your J head, whatever you're using down, and then they'll get themselves in trouble. Set hook, set the hook early, catch and release, have a good time. You know, this is, and this is a good time. This is really a good time for you to practice your technique, for you to go scout out areas, for you to learn the areas, like, is there a drop off here? If there's a rock here, there's a little patch of oyster here. You know, you go learn all these different areas or go look for these areas that you're not familiar with. Like, where are you fishing? What are these guys catching? Well, go look. Go go figure it out. Look what's in the background. Take, look at Google Maps. Pull your phone out. Look at Google Maps and go out and try to find these spots or try to find new spots for yourself. The When it's not crowded, because this is the time to do it. And then when December 15 happens and the season opens, you have your locations. You know your spots. You know where the drop offs are, where that little hole is. You know, you know, where is the best spot at this location to be casting and be fishing. Because, you know, when the closure, you already had your success. So now you come and you harvest. This is when you do it. This is, you know, I always encourage people to fish. Go out, fish, have a good time. Um, we are. We're not stopping. <laughs> we're not stopping. Uh Eric and I have been tearing them up and having a good time. I see other people on Facebook having a good time tearing them up. My Patreons are coming out. We're doing open invites. It's all love, man. It's all fishing. It's all good. Catch and release. Hats off to everybody. I hope you have. Hope everybody had a very good Thanksgiving. I hope you have a very good Christmas in case I don't have a time to sit down and say it again. I wish you all the best. Thank you for watching Texas All Water Fishing. I mean that with all my heart. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please go ahead and do so. It really helps the channel out a lot. Liking the video, leaving the comment. You know, maybe, maybe you want to share what your what your go to lure is. I know I had people share their go to lures. Mine is personally is goat when it, when I am looking for flounder. Uh, I, I I don't I like fishing with the tandem rig, but I don't fish with the tandem rig a lot unless I'm on a kayak because I can just go get it out and the get her done rig, man. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to dust it off. I'm gonna have to bring it back out. Because it's been, it's, you know, it's, I, I've been missing them. I've been, I haven't really got on the flounder with the get her done rig. So I'm gonna have to keep, I'm gonna keep throwing and, and figure it out, see what's going on. Um, but hey guys, thanks again. You know, this is just a flounder update. What is going on in the water? What am I seeing? What are we experiencing? When are the flounder gonna leave? Hopefully they stick around. I would love it if they stick around to like forever. <laughs> Let's just keep catching them. Let's catch them all the way to March. March. But thanks, guys. Thanks again. Like I said before, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Hopefully, next time you catch me, 
hooking up.